Welcome to Champions Heart. You can't play boxing. Featuring boxing addict Johnny Farace and friends from super fans to superstars. Let's roll. Hey, 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 boxing fans, and welcome to Champions Heart. You can't play boxing. I'm Johnny Farace, and I'm joined once again by Hall of Fame publicist from 15rounds.com, Mark Abrams. What's up, Johnny? What's going, what's going on, my man? Oh, man, I'm enjoying all this great boxing we've had of late. I think there's really been a pretty good run lately. Um, and it's been a little bit since we spoke. We're back in the saddle now, so I want to kind of catch up a little bit. Um, let, let's rewind all the way back, get right back at it. Uh, rewind back to the Estrada uh, fight, Kudras. That was an incredible fight. Um, another fight of the year, possible candidate, but there's been some, you know, the, the Berenczak uh, fight. So uh, tell me your thoughts about that one. The Quadras uh, fight with, um, with Juan Francisco show was a terrific fight. Uh, uh, Estrada, you know, obviously, uh, I think got the stoppage victory, but the uh, Quadras, who's you know been been in with everybody, uh, just fought a hell of a fight. They 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 stood toe toe like two uh, two Mex the, the two Mexican warriors that they are, and uh, it looks like Estrada may be heading for a um, showdown or rematch with uh, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. A little fact, I actually broadcast the first fight on uh, Wealth TV back in, I think, 2012. 2012. One, of the, one of the best fights I was ever, I was ever at, let alone broadcast. And so, um, Estrada Gonzalez, too, is gonna, I'm looking forward to that immensely. Nice. So what do you see happening in that fight eight years, maybe nine years later? I, you know, what? I, I haven't close. thought, I'll be honest, I haven't thought about it, you know, maybe when they announce it, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Gonzalez, he may be back to uh, being the, the Chocolatito of a few years ago before the the couple losses. And Estrada, is, he's been on a roll. So, I mean, it, it is the makings of another terrific fight uh, when the, the, this fight eventually happens. Excited for that. Really excited for that fight. A um, couple of the <clears throat> top lightweights were in action a few weeks ago. Uh, Tank Davis made, uh, he, he was in a little bit of a, a, a boxing match, if you will, at the beginning. It was a, it was a terrific fight with Leo Santa Cruz uh, for as long. I mean, Santa Cruz is, is a terrific fighter. Maybe not at 100, 135 pounds or, you know, the fight was fought at 130. But he, he, he fought as well as he could until he got caught with that blistering uppercut in the sixth round. And that was a blistering uppercut. It looks like he was kind of um, looking for that a little bit. Obviously, Tank was. He threw several through the you know throughout the fight. Then he finally uh, he finally uh, got home with one. And boy, did he ever! He sure did. Um, and hopefully, Santa Cruz is all right. I'm sure he is. Um, all goes there. Another top lightweight, obviously. Um, um, Haney, Devin Haney, was in action. He fought uh, uh, somewhat of a weathered, if you will. Gamboa. Arcus Gamboa was yes. very, very pedestrian performance. It was, I mean, Haney did what he had to do. He won the fight, but he, he didn't, he looked spectacular. You know, obviously with Lopez's win a couple weeks earlier and all the who's going to fight who and so forth right. and so on, he, he really didn't uh, make a case that he's right now the guy at lightweight. Definitely was Tiafimo Lopez. Perhaps Tank Davis made a statement too, but like you said. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he did. I mean, he, he did. He remember his performance a lot more than he remember Haney's performance. Right, but the asterisk there is that he fought a guy at lightweight that was at junior lightweight. Uh, true, I, I, I see what you're saying there, but um, you know, Haney, Haney's performance, you know, he like I said, he did what he had to do to win. He went every right. round, and you know, uh, in that regard, he, he was fine. But you know, Gamboa come off the injury, uh, the Achilles injury, and yeah. uh, being stopped by the Davis, uh, but you know, a year before, he expected maybe Haney to maybe try to one up him a little bit, and that didn't happen. It did not it didn't happen. happen here. So, so where do you think? How does the lightweight division shake out? Obviously, Teofimo Lopez is uh, obviously staked his claim as the top of the, that division. He's quickly outgrowing that division, if not already. What do you see happening in that division? Um, he, I mean, it goes through Lopez now. It all, you know. Obviously, I was reading today. Maybe he'll make his mandatory um, defense. 
possibly an Australia against George Cambosis. That, that, that could possibly happen. But right now, he's the guy. We, you know, obviously, Ryan Garcia, who doesn't have a belt, uh, his fight with uh, Lou Campbell has been pushed back due to Campbell uh, getting COVID. And uh, see if he uh, wants to kind of plant his flag in, in the top of the lightweight division. So you project him, uh, Lopez, to stay in the lightweight division for a few fights? A couple. It's possible. It's possible. The, you know, they're going to see uh, see what's out there. And, you know, if a fight with Haney or, or Garcia or someone uh, – Tank Davis materializes. If not, maybe one, one or two defenses and uh, back up to 140 to you know maybe fight the winner of the Taylor Ramirez fight. Oh man, that would be great. That would be great. That would definitely be awesome. Um, <clears throat> Want to bring up uh, Luis Ortiz's fight against Alexander Flores? I know yeah. the purse was withheld on that. Have you gotten any updates on that? Did they take his purse from which I read? I, I, you know, I haven't heard one way or the other if they did or not. All right, anyway, let's move on. Let's move on to this past weekend. Katie Taylor, uh, man, she she went to work. <laughs> yeah, she uh, defeated Miriam Gutierrez, uh, you know, a very decisive victory. And, you know, we'll see if uh, Katie fights one of the, the bigger names in, you know, whether it's the 135, 130, 140-pound division. Right, yeah, they're talking about moving her up. Um, to, to, you know, maybe McCaskill, I believe they're talking possible, about. Right? Yeah. Possible, possible. McCaskill, Breakus, there's some other fighters at 140 pounds. There's uh, other world champions out there, uh, maybe someone like Mary McGee or the fight I just broadcast, Kaylee Reese is a 140-pound world champion. So we'll, we'll see what's uh, out there for um, for Katie Taylor. Decide so which way she wants to go and, you know, match room Eddie Hearn. <clears throat> Right, and with, with her activity, which has been a lot, she's definitely kept busy. Uh, she's been elevated to one of the top uh, number one power for pound lists. Yeah, um, Ring Magazine, they're doing a good job uh, with the, the, the rankings for, for, for women boxing. And, uh, you know, uh, Katie Taylor right now is number one, but, you know, they're, they're, she's going to be entering in, like we said, divisions where, where there's going to be some real g- good challenges for her. All right, right. Um, Friday or Saturday night, ESPN once again gave us free boxing, but then somehow figured out how to kind of screw it up a little bit with that lengthy. Uh, yeah. uh, that was a Las Vegas commission and nothing to really do with ESPN, of course. But that was a mess after a great first fight between Franco and Maloney. Um, and then you get this. It's a good first yeah, round, though. Yeah, I mean, Maloney, <laughs> I mean, obviously Maloney had a heck of a first round and then. You know, most people uh, think it was a punch. They ruled it a butt. Me, I, I, I don't. I, it, and, and just you know the way they handled it, they didn't. They took them twenty six minutes to figure all that out. I mean that 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 was the that. whole thing. And if they're if they're going if they're not gonna get the call right, at least you know not waste another half hour of, of people's times. It, it, it was that and beyond, and, and I feel bad because we are always trying to bring more fans into the boxing world, and those average boxing fans that have tuned in for more than five minutes were like, I'm out. Yeah. No, <laughs> you know, I, I hear you, but the ratings say otherwise. So okay. they, it was a, they had a great rating at over 2 million people, peaked at over 2 million. Wow. Uh, average about one, almost 1. 1.8. So, uh the, the, you know, at least, uh, you know, it was a, g- a good audience to uh, watch the Crawford fight on Saturday night. And they sure did. TBC, number one on a lot of the pound-for-pound pound top lists, and he went to work again um, Saturday night. Looked like he normally starts a little slow as he does. He makes his adjustments, and then, bam, that oh, right yeah. hook. Yeah, wow. it was a little right hook. Hurt Kel Brook, and Crawford's the best finisher in the game. He's He, he sees a guy hurt. He he gets really mean in there and wow. gets, his guy, gets his guy out of there. And, uh, you know, he – very, very, you know, him, I mean, Sam or Canelo Alvarez, in my opinion, are the two best fighters in the world. Uh, well, yeah, he's definitely a dog, and he showed that once again. And afterwards, uh, Bob Arum was pretty critical about how Bud does or does not promote himself or is not that vocal. Yeah, I mean, that, that's between of... them. I, I try not to get it, you know, comment and all that stuff. That's right. just, you know. My, my thought is, though, that, you know, if, if they are at an impasse or whatever is happening here, is this a possibility that Bug can get out of his contract there and we can finally well, see the Spencer? He's got a year left, so we'll see what happens in the next year. So I believe right. it's around next October or something. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. If uh, top rank can get him these fights, maybe he sticks around. If not, maybe not. I, I, we, right, I don't right. Know that. 
Right, right. Um, but I hope we do see that fight in its prime. Yeah. I'm sure, hopefully we will. Um, there's some good stuff that's coming up. But before that, you mentioned Canelo. Canelo divorced Golden Boy, but then he got back together with the zone. Yeah, he's going to fight Callum Smith. Uh, Eddie Hearn and Matchroom helped put that together with Canelo. It's a, it's a real good fight. Callum Smith, it's going to be an action-packed fight. Callum Smith's a very offensive fighter. He, uh, he got good power, and he's going to, you know, it's, 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 it's a good challenge for Canelo Alvarez. I like out of all the names that were bandied about, whether it's Saunders or some of the other guys, I like Calum Smith the, 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 the best, you know. And then, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully at some point we'll get a Golovkin uh, third fight. Right. So when you say you like Callum Smith the best, are you saying you like him best to upset Canelo? Well, I don't know. I don't want to say. Uh, I, I think he's he has the best chance to give him a good fight. I don't know. I'm not going to go that far yet, but uh -huh. he's got a good chance to give him a good fight and um, an entertaining fight as well. So, uh, you know, I think uh, even though Smith's last fight against John Ryder, which he almost lost, I mean, Ryder, you know, he's a South Palm, you know, different kind of style. I think this fight with with Canelo will be a, a uh, entertaining scrap. Entertaining, competitive, and, and I yeah. honestly, I think Somewhat Canelo, competitive, I think, at least, you know. Right. I felt Canelo kind of beat the odds in a bit, too, because I didn't, you know, a month ago, it was like, no way we're going to see him fight by the end of the year. Well, they said there after... After the, um, the breakup with Golden Boy, they said, we'll look for our announcement real soon. And, you know, they they, uh, they they followed through on their word. But they said there may be an arbitration ruling that may force Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder to fight. Uh, I, I mean, I just read stuff. I don't know what's going on. But Fury isn't going to – he's not going to fight on December 5th. So then maybe that opens the door back up for that third fight to happen. I, 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 don't, I don't know if – you know, they're going to wait to see what Anthony Joshua does. Bob Arum, who's got Kubra, Pulev is saying that Pulev is going to knock out Joshua. So who, who knows? Yeah, that, that should be a definitely interesting one. Another great fight before the end of the year. Yeah, just, well, that's December 12th, but there's big fights, you know, almost every weekend uh, with, with Spence and on the 5th and Garcia. We talked about stuff that's going on December 12th. I think there's a chance Gennady Golovkin's going to fight on the 18th. You got Canelo on the 19th. I think there's going to be a show with Fox on the 26th. You know, just so almost every yeah. Saturday for the rest of the year, there's, there's going to be uh, big stuff. Uh, Showtime's got a couple fights. I think they got a good show on the 19th, maybe, uh, you know, with uh, Donaire and Emmanuel Rodriguez. Yes. Right. So, um, an ESPN, December 12th, I think Shakur Stevenson is going to headline against Toka Kong Cleary. And so, there's going to be a lot of action, a lot of uh, holiday cheer for the boxing fans. Yes, sir. And then, honestly speaking, I think that's kind of been that way for the last 60 days or 30 plus 40 days, mm -hmm. uh, last 60. And been some good boxing, really it good seems boxing. Like they, it seems like they're going to try to jam a lot over the next, uh, you know, next four or five weeks. It all starts tonight, actually, on a, a new series called, I believe, Ring City. Ring City USA uh, yes, on sir. the NBC Sports Network. It uh, should be very interesting. It's uh, They're billing it as a way for some of the middle promoters who aren't, who do not have those those exclusive TV and streaming deals uh, to be able to you know match up their fighters in, in good 50-50 fights and uh, you know uh, you know remains to be seen but I, I think you know they're off to a, a pretty good start with the, the first three shows that they've announced. Always excited that anybody's able well not anybody that people are able to like make their way through this whole COVID mess. Absolutely. They're keeping things going and it feels like the boxing community have really tried to do their best and keeping their head above water top ranks been awesome match ranks been awesome mm -hmm. matching rather and it's really been a, uh inspiring to know that the boxing world has kept afloat as it has absolutely you know, um, there's one absolutely. more fight on the zone on saturday i believe um connor ben, connor ben against uh, sebastian formella we saw formella fight 12 rounds against sean porter ben the son of the former super middleweight champion of the world nigel ben uh, undefeated welterweight and this is a good test for him to see where he's at in, in the welterweight division as he moves forward nice well like you said a lot of great boxing coming up we've saw a lot of good boxing um welcome back i appreciate you coming back on after a little break and i'm glad you're feeling really. better as well thank you i appreciate that man you know we're gonna do a big end next week and until then you dream big live large and love life we'll talk to you next time thank you very much I'll talk to you.